Uh, good morning. This is Meghna Bhomik. Uh, I'm here to teach you about digital illustrations using different softwares. And we'll start off with Adobe Illustrator. So let's just share my screen. Um, right. So in today's class, we'll learn about the pen tool and how to use it uh, for making traditional and motifs of this kind. So the first thing that we're about to do is we'll take a new page. We'll go to File, New. Uh, and you'll here you'll get a lot many options of the size of the pages. Uh, I'm here about to take an A3 size page. And I would like to have it in pixels. You can have it in a landscape mode or a portrait mode. I often use on a landscape mode. So it will just open up a new page. So the tool that we are about to learn today is about this pen tool. Uh, so this tool is uh, basically uh, is used to draw objects or to trace on objects. Uh, so today we will see how to draw with it. So the first thing that we will do is we will create a straight line. How to do that? We will just click on here and you would see that this a blue line is guiding us over to draw a straight line anywhere in the page. You, if you want a straight line to be drawn on any side, say I want my line to be here. And this is how we're going to create a straight line. Now press escape to release your pen tool. You would see that this has given us. Now to zoom in, there's a zoom option here, the zoom tool. You'll click on it and click as many times as you want your page to be, as big you want your page to be. You can click on space bar and you can drag your page onto whatever side you want to do here. So see, I have drawn a straight line using a pen tool. Now, we will do it again. We will draw a straight line again, and I want to explain you a little something on it. See, I have drawn a straight line over here. And click on Escape. Now, the little boxes that you're able to see here, these are called nodes, right? The two points. And the line that is joining the two nodes, this is called a path or an anchor path. Now, what this node does, see, if Say if you want to move this particular corner, you can select it and you can move this corner by holding onto this. You, this path will not move. Now, if you want to move your whole object, say a little onto your right, you will select onto your path and you will move your object. But if you want only one path to move and not the other, you will select onto the anchor tool and you will move it. But as you do it, you would see that this line is moving. So to do that, what you're going to do, if you have to control that. Okay, we'll go to that later. Uh, let me show you first how to make a curve out of it. See? Uh, I want to make a curve or an X here. We'll click here in an object and you'll see that this blue line will not leave you until you press escape or enter. Then you will release your pen tool. To release it, uh, press escape or enter. Okay. Keep, uh, keep on uh, making notes onto the keys uh, whenever I say any. So it will just help you guide. Now, we will control Z to undo. Control Z is used to undo your uh, objects or your steps. Basically. Now click on to the pen tool. Now say we want to create an S or a curve shape. We will click on to it. Now I want my curve on this side of the page, right? Onto the left side. So, and I want it right over here. 
So if I want my bulge to be created onto the left side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and you would release your mouse. Without releasing your mouse, you will drag your object mouse to the left. Remember, if you want your bulge to on the right side, on the onto the left side, you will, without losing your click, you will drag it onto the opposite direction. Now, uh, again, press escape to release pen tool. Now, as you can see, there these are this line is called curve handles. Now, what does this curve handle do? This curve handle is there basically to edit your curve. Now, say you would go to the direct selection tool to edit this curve handle. To edit this curve, say you want your curve to be a little more, more flexible, you can edit this. Or you want to move this around, you can have that. But if you do not want to end your uh, line or your drawing over here, what you're going to do, you're going to resume your work. After editing, you want to resume your work from here as well. So you're going to take pen tool again, you're going to click on to the same point and see, you're going to resume your work. Now I want the same S to be done, say uh, on the downward side, or I want the bulge to be somewhere on the upward side. So I'll just put it over here say could you see this pink line going on so this says that this is on a straight line see if i'm going down this will show me that this is on a straight line the pink line is there to help you guide okay another thing before we do anything always go on to the view and uh, see that your smart guides are clicked on you always need your smart guide so that uh, it's all it's there on the cc version actually so then you will get all your smart guide the pink parts that is following around so again we will resume our work from here see so now i want to create another s on the upper side so i'm click and drag your mouse down i want so i wanted the bulge on the upper side so i click and drag my mouse down so i got the bulge or the curve on the upper side now what if we want to release this to release this curve handle we just want this curve handle or we want to continue to make our object so what we are going to do is we are going to press on here once again to the end so we will uh, not have the second curve handle and we will continue with the work say here it intersects this is the street and this is the smart guy this here intersects here and what if we want the straight line here and we want the intersection here so see we got this intersection between the two so i'm going to press and we're going to create this bulge kind of thing okay so this is what line is about so see you as you could see that this is not proper i want to edit this a little bit now here so this is what your curve handle does. It helps you make edits. Now, this is what the lines are called. These are open lines. Okay, these are not shapes yet. Now, what if we want to make shape? Always remember to close down your uh, line. Uh, I'll show you in a new way. So I make the same object here, say this way. Now, always remember that you have to close the lines to make it in an object or else it will just be a line. By closing means the same node where you have started, you have to close your work. Okay, so this will create a shape. This is a whole object because when you move it around, see, when you move it or you can fill in color, this is a whole shape. Okay. See, you could fill in color on this, but when you uh, try to fill in color here, this will help you, but this is a bit different. This is not a proper shape. 
So you see the difference. Okay, we'll talk about the colors later. So this is now see if you have to delete any of object from your workspace you will simply select the object say you want to delete this you will simply select the object and you'll press delete you'll select and you'll delete or uh, backspace you'll click backspace okay let's create another object okay one more thing say uh, you want to create straight line so when you click it, you will see that this is going a uh, haphazard way. You can click a draw line wherever you want. But say you want to create a box. You want to create a square or a rectangle, or you want your lines on a particular 90 degree or 45 degree angle. So what you would do is you would uh, click and you will uh, press shift. So when you press shift, you see that uh, it is creating line only on a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle. So say you created this here, or we are about to make a box. So say, um, now this number that is popping up, you see this D3, uh, D, uh, PX that is written on the side as you're moving. This helps you uh, to get a guide onto the measurement. Like that was a 70 something. So let's do this 70. Okay, when we are going, it is just, we will have to intersect it. So 70 pm and here we will close it so by pressing we will get a straight line so this is here how we create a box just press shift to make straight line so i taught you how to make line how to make a shape with it how to create a straight line um now let's do let's make something Say we want an object with a straight line and a curve. Say uh, we want to make a keyhole. Okay. Again, space bar and drag your page up or down as you want. Now, uh, let's make a keyhole. To make a keyhole, we need a perfect uh, straight line and a curve. So how do we do that? We will click here. We will press shift and down. We will put it over here, say, right? We'll go up and we'll intersect. So this is how we're going to get, uh, say, again, I'll press spacebar. I'll put it little down. Say from here, I want right in the middle. Uh, let's go with the straight line here, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Uh, yes, this is. I want the bulge from here, right? Okay, I want the bulge from here. Okay. I want the bulge to be here. We can edit it a little bit. So this is somewhat a key looks like, but you see that there is this little corner thing going on and the shape isn't right. So we can edit that. Now go to the direct selection tool. First, what we'll do is we're going to edit the bulge a little bit. We are going to edit this bulge as well. And we'll try to make it a little bigger from here or keep it down maybe. Just a little bit over here. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the gist, right? <laughs> so this is how you can do a, uh, okay, another form we can do is first to create a curve.
go to the direct collection tool, make it a little bit here, this one here, make this one purple. Right. So you're getting the gist. So this is how you're going to draw a straight line and a curve. Okay, uh, let's do some symmetrical shape. Now, what is symmetrical shape? What do you mean by symmetry? Now, symmetry means two identical side of any object. That is, uh, say a face. Now, your face has two identical sides. If you uh, just close down half of the face, the other half is just identical. You take an apple, you cut it into half. Uh, so that two identical, when it's joined together, gives you a symmetrical image. Uh, say, okay, let me do it. Say I want to make a heart over here. So I'm trying to create a heart right here. So can you see that these two sides are not equal and doesn't matter how many times I try it with editing it, it wouldn't be a proper symmetry, right? It never be a proper symmetrical shape. So how do we bring it out in a proper symmetrical shape? So we will use mirror images or reflection to do that. So for that, what I'm going to do is take a fresh corner of the page. So here, now what are we going to do is say we want to create a Christmas tree. First, you press Control R to get rulers. You can get rulers from there or here you will find rulers. From go to the view and you'll find rulers. Now, what does ruler does? Ruler helps you to take a guide according to you. Means say you want uh, to work right there onto the center of the page, or you want to work onto this part of the corner of the page. Say I want to work right over here, and this is where I want my symmetrical item to be. So how to make a symmetrical item the best? Uh, the best way to do it is to draw the half of the image and then reflect it. Okay, so that is the best way to do a symmetrical shape. Uh, okay, another thing is after taking a ruler. So this is your guide. So what we are going to do, we are going to press and you can set that there is an unlock guide, means this is already locked, That is that means now I cannot move this guide which I have taken from here. Say uh, it was not locked, say it was unlocked. Can you see that now I can move this guide? You can bring one ruler or you can bring two guides. It depends on you. You can make it a whole graph or you can just work with one line, as many guides you want. So uh, as you've seen, to undo a ruler, you would just undo move to, uh, if you have not, and you just do undo rulers to, uh, to remove your ruler. But now I want my ruler to be there, be right over here. And I want to lock my guides. So here you would see hide guides and lock guides. I want to lock my guide. Okay, let's make a shape right here. We will go to a pen tool. Uh, say, uh, let's make a Christmas tree. To make a Christmas tree, now we need perfect angles and perfect straight lines. Okay. Say right over here. Now, if I do it right this, see, without pressing the shift, if I do, it will go something like this. This can be haywire or something. But I don't want that. I want it to be perfect angles. Size can differ, but I want my angles to be perfect. So I'll uh, click shift. So it has given me a perfect 45 degree angle. Uh, let's get it to 40 something. Okay. 
Now I'll bring it down, see, a straight line again to 15. Okay, right in the center. Again, we'll go down to the, somewhere in the 45 degree angle, say, hmm, somewhat 40, then again, somewhat 15. Now the 40 and 15 that I'm doing is, as you can see, the number is going on uh, beside the pen tool mark, which is helping me to see this size of this lines that I have created. Now, okay, let's do one more. Somewhere. Now I want to close it right over here. Uh, we will go here. Uh, right. Go down to the straight line, and I clicked here in detecting it, and that is it. So this is a Christmas tree, half of it, right? Second. So this thing has happened because uh, we will select it. This has somehow turned off. So we'll go there, click, right. This way. This is here to give you stroke and color fill. We'll talk about this later. So let me let us resume our work with the pen tool. So say here it was an anchor. And here I have intersected it. Okay, so I'll release the pen tool, and this is what I have got. So now, when we have this, say we will select this line, we will uh, right click on the mouse, we will go to the transform, reflect image. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, let's see what has happened, what's gone wrong. Let us do a little one more time. Uh, to undo this, the key to undo is Control Z. If something like this is happening, you will just undo it. Press Shift right, and intercept. Release it. Right. So now. We're going to select it, select, transform, select. Now, the preview is here is on. And so if it is not clicked on, just click it. My preview is on. So this is how it will go. Now, if it will has been horizontal, so I don't want that. We want it in vertical. Now, this is the original line that we have created. But we do not want to reflect the original line. We want another copy of it. So we will not press OK. If we press OK, remember that we uh, we will reflect this original line over here. We want a copy of it. So we'll press copy. And we'll keep it this way. So right over here. Intersect it. And here. We got a perfect symmetrical tree right over here. But still, it is not a shape yet. It is not a, we don't want a shape. We want it to be aligned together. We want to create a path, one path, one shape. To make one path, we need to join the object or to group the object. Now, there is a difference between grouping and joining. By grouping things, we uh, always go to the direct selection tool to do this thing. Okay, we don't need a guide anymore. So we will do high ruler. Unlock the guide and hide guides. Now, how to do that, I'll show you. See, here's a zoom option. You will zoom in to your object. Could you see? 
this little thing so it is not a one path yet if we move this object this object will move these are two different lines so we don't want that we want to create a perfect path so how we are going to do it always remember go to the direct selection tool go here you do, can simply press join and it will get joined okay now i'm pressing space bar and i'm moving my page upward here again so when i have clicked join it has already joined we do not have to join this so to zoom in you will just have to click press if you uh, click alt to zoom out so here we got our perfect symmetrical tree or perfect shape okay another thing let me teach you about something about joining and grouping so we will have a pen tool say uh, say we have two lines over here okay we have two lines see what happens when we join the object here we will join the object so when we joining it we are having one line we are getting another path over here this another tangent this is called tangent now let me do another say here this is one a uh, line and this is another line that i have created now we will go to direct selection let me just zoom in a little bit to show you give a few of you you see when i have joined it it has given me another path right see this little but i don't want that i want a perfect corner so how to do that i do not want this line to go i want a perfect corner so do that i am just undoing it so how to do that we will go to always remember to do it with direct selection tool we will select the two corners we will go here and we'll take an average right over here uh we'll do click on both and okay so what has this done see this has brought the two uh taken the two nodes from the uh, of, uh, from two different lines and it has created one node it has taken the average of the two and it has joined the lines but there is still this corner thing so we want this corner thing to go uh, corner thing so we will then join and here we have a perfect corner so this is how you join thing now okay what is the difference between joining and grouping when we join thing we are creating it as one object okay say we have created a one object this is one line this is one image now uh, say we will group it together mm. let's say uh, let's say we have taken this two objects we have selected and we have made a group now while doing it we are taking two different objects this is one object this is the second object and we are grouping it so that this can move around a little bit but when, if you want to create one path or one line one path as in this you are wanting to create one object itself you always have to join you either take an average and join but here i did not use uh, the joining process uh, the average process why because mine was really uh, close to each other okay mine was really close to each other and i did not need that i already got a perfect corner by simply joining it i got a one anchor point so i did not have to take out an average but if there would have been a certain gap over here i wouldn't have got a uh, the perfect corner i would have taken an average first and then joined it together okay so this was it so let me show you 
how you can make motives. Okay, let's take all of this and delete it. Clear out the space. Uh, okay. So at first I showed you this. Let me show you. This is a jolly motive that you can do. How to do this? Pretty easy. Okay. Uh, take your pen tool. Now say you want to draw a curve. Here. I want this curve right here. So this is 220. I'll try to make it in 220. Now see, this is a shape. Okay, control R to get a ruler guide. Show guides. Okay, now can you understand why we uh, brought the rulers in? Could you see that this S and this A is in a proper, uh, it is interacting the path guides, right? But here, the curve is not perfect. It is not guiding it properly. This and this is different. This and this is different. So to fix that, we'll select it. We'll play around with our curve handles. Here, bring it to the proper bulge as much as we could. Here, there we have it. Mm. Hide guides. So, see, we have uh, taken it a little bit out of our page. Why? So that the uh, measurement was correct. Now say if we have to uh, shorten it a little bit. We will select the image and we do not want to distort the shape of it. We will click on shift. We will click on to shift and then we will lessen the object here. Right over here, say. Right here. Okay. Here, we got a perfect head. Now, how to make it and change it into a pattern? We'll select again, go to transform, go to reflect. We need a vertical preview. We need a copy of it. We'll take a copy. We'll make it right where it intersects okay now we how many copy can we get so we can either do that or what we can do is now we are going to create a okay go to the direct selection tool we press this see what happens let us
undo. Let's undo that. So let's simply keep it together. Yeah. How did we do that? We simply joined it. We could have joined it, we could have grouped it, but if we have grouped it, we wouldn't have got the perfect shape of it. Now, what we want to do is a, we want the copy of this whole thing. This is one image that we got. So we will press Control C copy and Control V. Right. So we will take this image. Go and here it's written intersect. Here it is intersecting. Again, we will press Control V. We'll get another copy of it. See how simple and easy it is to make it into a pattern. This is what is a jolly pattern is. Now, see, now this is a whole pattern, but as you can see, that still this is all one single line, the first pattern that we created, right? This is not yet joined. This is all single. We have just taken copy of it. So what we are going to do is we can simply place it, make it a group. When we are grouping it, it is single object, but we can move this around all together, right? But we want it to be a single image. This line, we want it to be a pattern. We will go to the direct selection tool here we'll go to the direct selection tool we'll take our images and let's see what happens when we join it okay we have joined it they must be in the same okay let's see what happens now, when we move it around, now this image has been created. It is a pattern now. You see? Now, let's see what happens when we fill in color to it. Okay, we want a separate color. Yeah. We can get it this way. Oh. We want a different stroke pattern. We will learn about that later. Select it. Stroke pattern, say something around it. Blue pattern we want. We got it. We have to increase somewhat. Like that. So, how to fill in color, which we taught in the next class. So, this is how you can use your pen tool to draw motifs, to draw images to draw any shapes. Uh, so just play around with it and let's see what you can create into the next class. Thank you.